Joining us at this point live is Major Mohammad Ali Shah, Defence Analyst. We also have Gautam Mukherjee, Senior Journalist, live with us. Rubinder Sajdev, International Affairs Expert, is live with us on the broadcast. We also have Arti Tikku, Foreign Affairs Analyst, joining us live. Professor Madhav Nalapath, Editorial Director of the Sunday Guardian, joins us live as well. Wing Commander Praful Bakshi also is with us live, former Chief Spokesperson, Ministry of Defence. Well, Major Mohammad Ali Shah, let me uh, draw you in here. Major Mohammad Ali Shah, absolutely condemnable, audacious attack taking place. Um, you know, what, what do you believe was the modus operandi uh, adopted by the terrorists who were behind it? Uh, Uday, firstly, my heartfelt condolence to the brave soldiers and to the families, of course. Martyrs are brave, there's no doubt about that. Their families are the bravest. And here, the brave commanding officer, Colonel Party's family, his wife and son also were martyred. Now, if you look at it geographically, Uday, one part of Manipur, like the Moray border, is on the border of Myanmar. Now, the other border of Manipur is bordering Nagaland. So, if you cross in from Nagaland, that Mao Gate area, and you enter a place called Juala Mukhi, then after you go further towards Inapati, Mantri Pokhri, Imphal, Thaubel, Palel, Kakchin, Technopal, Moray, the entire belt is actually infested by different, different factions. There is ULF, United Nations Liberation Front, there is PLA, not the giant Chinese PLA, the Manipur People's Liberation Army. Then there is KYKL, Kangla Yavon Kanal Loop, then there is PULF, People's, uh, People's uh, Liberation Army. So there are different, different groups. Now, these groups are fighting for a separate state for quite a while and the, uh, the issue of Manipur needs to be addressed now. Because just a few days back, I was with you again, Uday, when we were, we were talking about in More, where they discovered over 250 grams of RDX, and that time, uh, the uh, the battalion over there, the assigned rifles battalion, did a very, very good job. Now, I had served for three years in that area. I know that area back of my hand over there. So now, what these people are actually trying to do, create disturbance. And one more factor which actually goes back is the military coup in Myanmar, which took place recently, that also has some aftercurrents in that area. So now, that area has to be tackled very, very carefully because... The insurgents in the Northeast, they specialize in guerrilla warfare, which means even if a militant is hiding five meters away from me, and if I'm on a patrol, I would not be able to see through my naked eye the insurgent. They are that, they are that special. So Assam Rifles, again, is a very good answer to them because they are a very, very good fighting force. And most of the people in Assam Rifles <coughs> are recruited from the Northeast. So that is why even when I used to go on a patrol over there, I used to keep the Naga boys as my scouts in front because they have the they have soldiering in their blood. They would keep a clear eye, and there are a uh, number of occasions where we broke on the ambush. Now, when we suffer such a loss, it is very very demoralizing for the battalion. When the commanding officer, when he uh, when he has been martyred, so the morale of the battalion obviously it automatically goes down. But here I. I am telling you there, I know the Assam Rifles Fighting Force. They will give a befitting reply to the PLA, perhaps, whose hand is being suspected right now, the People's Liberation Army. Now, this is going to be sorted out very soon, Uday. I mean, they are going to... Is eat ka jawab hum se denge magar. Ajeebal Kul, uh, uh, Major Mohammed Ali Shah, isn't it? Um, to find out where the intelligence failure was, whether there were any wrong informers, whether there were any moles who possibly were assisting inimical uh, entities across the border? Well, Uday, you know, when we were serving there on ground, we had cultivated our sources. We had our informers who would inform us that, you know, so-and-so terrorist camp is there. A quote of mine, Major D. Sri Ramkumar, now Colonel D. Sri Ramkumar, got the highest award for gallantry, the Ashok Chakra, alive. He conducted a very, very successful operation. Now, it's very important to understand the tribal affinities in that area. Because as Wing Commander Praful Bakshi rightly said, that you know, China will now try to find its hand from here as well. And Manipur has been on the boil for quite, a, quite some time, yes. But the moment we understand the tribal affinity, for example, the Nagas and Cookies in Manipur, they do not get along. They often torch their villages. Then there's Maite, which is the uh, Manipuri Hindu, there's Baite, there's Paites. And if you see them among the Nagas, they are Ao Nangas, Angamis, Semas. They are Maos, they are different, different Naga tribes. Now you have to understand the tribal affinity of the tribal culture because many tribes have differences. And you know, in, in, in Manipur, in Northeast especially, 
in countries like Indo if you go further down to the south pacific the country like laos or indonesia a uh, mere ak47 is very very easily available for a mere 100 dollars only so now people, the arms keep coming there smuggling happens in that area we had caught three trucks of narcotics we had three trucks of <coughs> ganja which was burned publicly so this is a menace in northeast which has been for a while and the best way like when i used to go for patrolling as Mr. Mukherjee rightly said, how did they know the commanding officer was going there? Well, when I used to go for patrolling, we used to move our... I was a captain that time, so I would remove my three stars from my shoulders and then we, they would patrol. Because if the militants, the insurgents are observing our movement from on top of a hill, they would not know who is leading the patrol. Similarly, the commanding officers have a something called a sign in front of their vehicles. There's something, the green safari of the gypsies called CEO in red. But I'm sure, because I was ADC to a co-commander there, with three stars, the three star general, he would remove, he would obviously go by air, he would go by helicopters, he would remove the star plates so that it's not discoverable that the commanding or the general officer commanding is there. Now there is a place called area Jopi, area Samtal, Trachanpur, which is a hotbed. Then there is a lake where there are floating islands, Loktak Lake. At that time, a lot of training activities we had caught <clears throat> in that area. So it's very, very important to actually geographic. There is an appointment of a lieutenant general, a retired lieutenant general. He's the chairman ceasefire monitoring group, though he's based in Nagaland in Koima. At that time, <coughs> general Kulkarni, retired general, he was there. He had been GOC in that area earlier. So he is responsible for maintaining peace in, in Nagaland for that matter. Now, if we go on further talks to insurgents in Manipur, I think they can be a ceasefire called if we could sort out insurgency in, in Assam, Kokrajhar was burning at one time, in my time. If we can sort out insurgency in Nagaland, Nagaland was on, the, was on a boil in the 90s. Even Manipur insurgency, I am sure, they can be a way, as uh, one of our panelists rightly over here said, we have to first understand what the problem is. We have actually understood. We have got a solution as well. Now we need a bit of, apart from military help, we need a bit of political help to come forward and indulge in talks with these insurgents so that there is a ceasefire which is called in Manipur, which is a need of the moment as soon as possible over there. All right, uh, let's leave it at that. Uh, my thanks to all of our guests for joining us. We've run completely out of time.